Today we're redesigning Libby, an app that helps people check out books digitally from their local library. And it's kind of a unique app because despite the fact that you're downloading a digital copy of the book, uh, you have to stick to the existing paradigm of checking out a book, only checking out a set number of books, and then checking it back in before someone else can withdraw that particular book. And I think this is because local libraries only have a certain number of licenses for these books and they want to preserve the IP in such a way that they're not just distributing it to everyone at the same time. Uh, so very unique experience, but as you can imagine, an experience like that would be very easy to make clunky in an app, and that's kind of what they've done. Here you can see the Libby app where there's just a lot of screens here. Um, most of these screens seem to help the user accomplish somewhat the same thing, so we're going to condense that a little bit. Uh, but there's also lots of conflicting design patterns. Sometimes they're using filters, sometimes they're using search buttons, and other times it's just really inconsistent coloring as well. And then finally, I, I do appreciate a dark theme for an app like this. Normally when people are reading, they might be in a dark place or under the covers or something. You want to keep the dark theme, but you definitely don't want to use pure saturated black for really anything in design. Dark themes are very difficult to build well, but we're going to take a stab at it today. We've gone ahead and synthesized a completely new design system for them, um, leveraging a little bit of that purple from the existing UI and a nice spattering of black hues. Uh, now, when you're building a dark interface specifically, you really want lots of darker hues of the primary accent color. Uh, that's how you can really control the visual hierarchy in a way that isn't just totally weird uh, with the dark background. We've also gave them some semantic colors and we're using very similar typefaces, a nice serif font and a sans font for the body. Let's get in there and see what we can come up with. First thing we're doing here is simplifying the navigation. Uh, I wanted to add some labels in here because sometimes icons on their own don't really explain the functionality of a given screen. Um, and we're also going to reduce the number of icons significantly um, and only focus on things that are really critical to the app. Um, now I'm trying to suss out exactly what I would imagine a user of an app like Libby would want to see on the homepage. And I'm kind of coming to the conclusion that what they want to see is just an overview of everything they have checked out, everything on their wait list, and then perhaps everything that they've ever read through the app. So I'm going to go ahead and build them out some kind of an overview dashboard here with all of the book covers. And we're going to slap an expiring soon label on some of these books to hint at the user that they're about to run out of time on the book and they should probably start reading it if they haven't already. Uh, since this is a special case and only shows up on certain books, it's important that it doesn't interfere with the overall flow from book to book. I also wanted to give the user a quick way to change the perspective that they were looking at on the homepage. So for instance, if I only wanted to look at books that I'm currently waiting on, I could switch it using this interface at the top. Here you're watching me realize that the expiring soon text is really not as visible as it should be and given that it's a special case it should probably have a little more color on it. Uh, so I'm putting a little floating badge to indicate the state change instead of the text below the book. Building out the search interface now, I wanted to go with a better list view that didn't require any sort of horizontal scrolling, because obviously if you're showing results to a user, they're going to want to scroll down through all of them at once. So trying to figure out a nice way to shrink the size of these book covers so we can display them all on one row. And fortunately, when you're working with book covers, you don't actually really need any other metadata when you're showing a thumbnail. The title's already right there, and usually the author's also there as well. Instead of giving users a blank screen when they haven't entered any search results, 
Having a predefined list of popular books or categories is a great way to get them engaged in idea of discovering new things to read before they've even typed a search string. I spent a lot of time fiddling around with the header in this UI because I really wanted to make it informative to the user but not invasive. Especially given the dark UI, it's really easy to screw up the information hierarchy with uh, things pulling attention if you have a saturated header. So here I'm just figuring out how to display the title of the page, whether or not the title of the page is really relevant at all, and then how to incorporate backlinks into secondary and child pages. Now, of course, when a user clicks on a book, they're going to want to see some sort of information about the book and then have some set of actions that they want to perform. Presumably, they want to check out a book or return it if it's already checked out, see some reviews, or maybe learn a little more about the book or add it to a wish list. Uh, so all this information needs to be displayed to the user in a very organic, natural way, uh, such that it doesn't interfere with the usability of the app and gives them all the information they need at once. Whenever you want to do data label pairs on mobile, this pattern is very common, especially on iOS, where you display each label on the left and then the value on the right with a separator line in between. This helps people understand that what you're looking at is metadata and is very natural and structured, so it's pleasing on the eye as well. I really didn't feel like these full width buttons were doing it for me. And especially on larger tablet screens, a full width button like this is just gonna look ridiculous. So going ahead and moving everything to the left here and using a text-based link structure uh, to give the user a series of actions that they can work with here. Now we lose a bit of the hierarchy where we can't really pull attention to one over the other, but we get the advantage of being able to place unlimited number of actions in this UI now. And finally, for any sort of transactional app, whether it's money or in this case, the transaction of books, it's important to be able to audit what's happened in the past. So some sort of history view that shows the user what they've borrowed and what they've returned since they started using Libby, I think would be a very useful view uh, for the user. And then finally, much like if you had a cash app and you wanted to show debits and credits, we can show deposits and withdrawals of the books themselves uh, with a simple color change just to the right of the card so users don't have to read anything, they can just look at the color and know exactly what they've done in the past. All right, there we go. I genuinely feel like this app is so much easier to use now. Uh, particularly on the home screen, I can see everything in a status view at once. I'm looking at all the books that I have checked out, holds on in my wish list or um, on my backlog of books I've already read. Um, if I want to return a book or just learn a little more about it, I can click on it and all the actions are presented to me there. If I want to search for a book and find a better one, I'm already presented with some suggestions based on my browsing history, but I can also continue to search there or just browse my history to keep track of everything that I've been returning and checking out over my entire history of using the app. Kind of an interesting view there. So I think this solves the design problem much better than the existing app, but let me know what you think. Leave a comment below with your thought. And if you are a Libby user, please give me some feedback. Do you think this would make Libby easier to use or not? Either way, I hope you found some design insight from this one, folks. Have a lovely week, and I'll see you in the next one.